the prospects of getting rescued if I do get stuck are zero. Hey guys, welcome back to HRG TV where we do dumb stuff and talk about dumb stuff. And today, more dumb stuff. We're at URI again, uh, URI National Forest, for those of you who don't know. It's a legendary off-road vehicle trail system. And we are on the most difficult trail in the entire place. It's called Daniel Trail. Uh, this is the front side of Daniel, to be clear. Every car I've ever taken up Daniel has taken body damage. So I'm not sure if we're gonna get very far, but to add another level of dumbness to this, I'm out here by myself, literally by myself. There's nobody else here but me, and it's a weekday. So there's very little chance that someone's gonna come along if I do need rescuing. We're taking lots of chances today. And I'm sure the Bronco will be fine. Uh, I do have recovery gear. I thought that far ahead, but it, this just is what it is. I have to get this video done, and this is the only time I have. So here we are. All right, this is Daniel Trail, front side. And you cannot get a perspective on camera how rugged this is but i'll try to give you a little bit of perspective this rock is about shoulder height as i as i stand on the ground here again right here it's undercut so you have to have pretty much a 90 degree approach into part angle to get through this obstacle Basically the Bronco will come up right there and the bumper's just gonna hit that rock and we're not gonna be able to go anywhere. So this here is the bypass. Basically you can go around the gatekeeper up here, but your problems are not over at that point because once you get up to here, and I'm telling you this is so steep, I can barely walk up it. But when you get to here, <laughs> you've got all these crazy rocks to contend with right here. And more often than not, you come through this little spot and your car wants to naturally rest in this area. And this little tree here, and there's a place up there, you'll most likely take some body damage. So let's see if we can get some perspective here. How rugged that is. Probably not. It's not going to come through in the camera. But basically, if we can get this far, you're sort of there. The real challenge comes up to right here. This is the main tricky spot in front side of Daniel. As you can see, it's very deep and very jagged. It's a tough one. And not only am I coming up this trail in a Bronco, I have no spotter. I do have a camera facing forward. That'll help a little bit, but I think I'm gonna go for it. All right, <laughs> we are attempting the front side of Daniel in a Bronco Sport, brand new Bronco Sport. Completely stock other than a one and a half inch lift by my company HRG and a set of Toyo uh, Open Country AT3 tires. That's the only modifications done to this. Let's see if this thing can handle the most difficult trail on the entire property here at Uwari National Forest. Let's go. Struggling already. We're three wheeling, but the computer's figured it out. And here we go, still moving. Let's see if we can go around that rock right there. I'm not sure. You know, the front facing camera in this thing helps quite a lot. So this is getting really fucking scary, but I wanna just have faith in the Broncos capabilities here and just keep moving, keep on. I'm actually gonna unbuckle my belt don't judge, but I have to look out the window here to see where we are. The idea here is to minimize body damage, which I've already... I think I've already scratched the door, but that's just the way it goes. side of this rock right here on the left Ooh, and climb over it how about that okay so far so good I'm avoiding the tree on the right hand side here just got through 
the gatekeeper at the front side of Daniel Trail. That is a pretty big deal, honestly. A lot of four-wheel drive guys will not believe that I did that until they see this video. Um, so moving on up to the more difficult parts of the trail, this part shouldn't be too big of a deal. Um, it's once we get past up here that it's gonna really, really, really test the Bronco's abilities because we're at yet another gatekeeper here. And I don't know how we're gonna get up this. We may have to back back down because for the simple fact that we won't be able to avoid body damage here. All right, we're gonna have to um, back down and probably do a little bit of a reassessment here because the way the notch is angled, you almost can't get through this without body damage. And I'll be honest with you guys, I'm sweating right now. My face is wet. I'm, I'm really freaking nervous because this thing's brand new and I don't want to mess it up. And this trail is known for messing stuff up. This whole situation was starting to get a little bit scary. So I decided to get out and just take a look, figure out where the tires were, get a good plan and figure out how I was going to climb up this rock. You know, remember, I don't have a spotter here. So at this time, my interior camera actually decided to go dead as well. So I do not have any more interior footage of me driving up this. But as you can see, the Bronco has a really tough time getting up on this rock. And this, at this point, I learned a little bit of a hack. And that's when you push the gas and the brake at the same time to build a little bit of boost and then release the brake. And it has just enough torque to get up just about any obstacle, which is really impressive. can see it does not get more precarious than this this is a very very extreme trail no doubt uh, as evidenced by <laughs> the position I'm in right now um, can we make it that's the thing all right so here's here's where we are now right now we've got to get through this part here without scraping the side on that rock right there so that means we got to ride our wheels up here coming across and then we've got to pick our wheel up on that right there and then get through. This part of Daniel Trail is by far the most challenging. There's a huge rock the Bronco had to climb up and as you can see it had a heck of a time. You know I almost cut this part but it's really cool to see the four-wheel drive system working. You can see that tire just grabbing for traction and right now it's basically balancing on two wheels the right front was in the air and the left rear was in the air so honestly two wheels down and look at that it just somehow some way the computers figure it out and it just went up I was so impressed and terrified because I was certain that at that point I was gonna have to get pulled up and there was nobody there it was really crazy and I'm so glad that the Bronco made it the Bronco Sport just did it. Front side of Daniel. Those who know this trail will realize the significance of that. I want to show you where we just came from. I just drove up that in a 2021 Ford Bronco Sport. So let's check the body damage, shall we? That's right, boys and girls, not a scratch. So front side of Daniel, the most difficult trail in the whole place. No problem. Now, there is more stuff coming up in this trail that we have to contend with, but that's the worst of it right there. And I'm not really worried about the rest of this trail, to be honest. We're still on Daniel Trail and we're at another obstacle. Now this one is extremely difficult with a spotter and with a very good off-road vehicle. I have one of those two things. I have a very good off-road vehicle, but I do not have a spotter. So the main idea here is we want to avoid this tree that borders the trail it's really tight against the trail and the only way that this thing is going to get through is to ride the high side on these extremely jagged rocks if the Ronco makes it through all this with no body damage i'm going to be extremely surprised we've got 
got more hellish terrain at uh, another really tough section of Daniel Trail. Obviously this part right here is not possible for well, pretty much any vehicle. If you had 44s or, or 50s maybe, and some absolutely ridiculous ground clearance, you maybe could take that line. We don't have that, but we're gonna make it up this anyway with 29 and a half inch tires and 10 and a half inches of ground clearance. That's what the Bronco has. We'll try any of these trails. I don't really care. I think the Bronco will do it anyway. So that's what we're doing. Tell, of course, it's insane. This is an insane trail, but look at this. Very rugged, very jagged, lots of slippery rocks, lots of loose rocks, lots of gravel. It's very, very difficult. The prospects of getting rescued if I do get stuck are zero. I want to point something out right now, and that is the fact that the Bronco Sport has not had any overheating issues. It hasn't had any weird lights come on. Everything is still normal. Um, you know, as far as the Bronco Sport's concerned, we're in a mall parking lot right now. It doesn't care. There's no problem. I haven't had any issues yet. And we've been through some really, really serious stuff. So will it last through the whole trail? Well, we got a little ways to go. Let's find out. I found the perfect spot to test out the mud ruts mode on the Bronco Sport. This is a pretty small uphill, but it's very, very slippery. So in mud ruts mode, I just decided to try crawling on up just normal speed. I didn't give it a lot of throttle, but I started to slip and when I gave it extra throttle, the computer just said, nah bro, <laughs> you're not going up that. So I backed out a little bit and switched it over real quick to rock crawl mode and then tried again and look what happened. It went up at like nothing. So I decided to put rock crawl mode to the ultimate test. I found an even bigger mud bog. This is extreme. I'm telling you guys, you can't get a perspective of how extreme this mud bog was. I had the Bronco Sport to the floor on every attempt on this mud bog. I was determined to get up this. And I tried and tried and tried, but even in rock crawl mode, the computer took away my throttle right at the crucial moment when I was carrying the speed up that little uphill part. So I'm not sure what the answer is on that. Um, there might be some way to bypass that interruption of the throttle and just give it the beans because if I had kept my wheel speed up, I would have absolutely made it up that. There was enough momentum to carry it up. And as you can see, just trying it again, it just would not do it. I really, really wanted to make that. But there right there I actually did find the limit of the Bronco Sport and it was only limited by the programming <laughs> all right so I have to confess I 
got a little bit careless. I was showing off for the Jeep guys and I, <laughs> I just piled into a stone like straight on dead stop. <laughs> right into the front lower portion of the bumper. I'm sure the plastic is completely destroyed now, but uh, you know, it was worth it, I guess. But anyway, so I'm cruising behind a, a Jeep guy right now and we're just, we're just kind of putting along through the trails. It's good stuff, but uh, yeah, I damaged the Bronco. All right, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and finish off the video there. I did not film an outro on this video. I was just too wrapped up in having a good time and pushing the Bronco to the limits. I have to say, this thing is very, very impressive for what it is. It's not a traditional 4x4, but it does things that you would never expect it to do. It's a lot of fun. And look forward to more of this in the next coming videos. I've got a lot more footage from this day that just didn't fit in this video. And you can see in this little clip right here, I'm actually going up some pretty extreme stuff but you know I ended up destroying the bumper on the Bronco <laughs> on this trip so I, I got a new one and I already installed it so the next video um, is going to be me doing a how-to video of how to replace that front bumper so look forward to that and I really appreciate you guys watching this far and I will see you in the next one why does it always end this way